Hi everyone, today we are continuing with the topic limits and continuity. Alright, so in this lesson, we will talk about how we evaluate limits involving infinity using algebraical method instead of graphical or analytical and also um, epsilon delta definition proof. Alright, so we will start with the limits at infinity and this is the starter question. Okay, so we want to evaluate the limit as x approach infinity of 1 over x minus 5 over x squared. So immediately you can tell, um, it's actually not direct substitution, but it's quite similar to how, what, you, what you do with the, um, direct substitution. If you put in infinity, then what happened? Okay, you have, okay, limit, okay, there is no more limit. If you put it infinity, it will be at minus 5 over infinity square, isn't it? And what is infinity square? It's still infinity. And 5 divided by a very big number, a very small number divided by a very big number, you will get 0. Okay? You will get a 0. Hence, the answer will just be 1 over at minus 0, which is 1 over 8. So when we talk about limits at infinity, and usually it is about your rational function, or sometimes you need to multiply by conjugate or whatever, your objective or your direction is to get as many something very small over something, okay, something very small, small over something very big, which is your infinity. Then you say this is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the approach that we do with the limits at infinity. Okay, so now we'll do some exercises from the worksheet. We need to find the limits of the function as x approach infinity and negative infinity. Okay, let's start with the first one. It's a polynomial rational function. So as I said, our direction is to make as many 1 over infinity or 1 over infinity square or 1 over infinity cube whatever as possible we make as many as possible so that we can we can compute okay so if you have a rational function what you have to do is you divide by the highest power in the denominator you'll see why later okay let me show you what happened if we divide by we just simply divide and instead of dividing by the highest power, okay? So in this case, I will divide by 1 over x, okay? Let's see what happened. You see, if you are taking, okay, we are taking limit when x approach infinity, all right? Of 1 over x over, you see, you have a x square left over minus 4 plus 1 over x. And you say, oh, this equals to 0, this equals to 0. Then what about this one? You still don't know, right? But in this case, actually, this question is quite simple because you only have a 1 on top. If your numerator is a very complex function, then yeah, you can't, you can't actually see it. So a proper way to do of doing this is you divide by the highest power so that you will not see anything crazy at the bottom. Okay, I divide by the highest power at the denominator, which is 3. Okay, divide by x cubed. And now I will just have the limit as x approach infinity, 1 over x cubed. This will just be 1, you see? It cancels out very nicely. And what do we have here? 4 over x squared plus 1 over x cubed. And do you know the answer for this? It's 0. And what about this? This is also 0. So it's 0 over 1, which will give you a 0. Finish. Okay. And um, I think the question wants us to find limits to negative infinity as well so 1 over it's actually the same approach okay divide by the highest divide both numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in denominator okay so it is exactly the same just that now it is negative infinity okay negative infinity okay so when we talk about negative infinity if because sometimes your answer will have positive or negative but in this case you know that it's going to be zero so what i always encourage people to do is 
instead of writing your negative here, you go and change the sign of negative, uh, so the sign of x in the function. Again, instead of writing your negative at this c here, I would write my negative inside the function, okay, which means it is now 1 over negative x cubed plus 4 negative x, okay, then plus 1. And now what happened to your c? Your c will now be positive infinity. Alright, the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes inside your function, some of the x will rest to odd power, some of the y will rest to even power. You know that a negative number rest to an odd number will give you negative number, while the negative number rest to an even number will give you uh, even power will give you a positive number. So it's safer to do it this way so that you will not make any careless mistake when you try to sub in your infinity. Okay, then after that it's actually the same approach. You just go ahead and divide everything by the highest power in the denominator. So now it is, you see it's actually quite similar to part A, isn't it? And now you see it is now negative 1 instead of 1. Then this is, did I copy wrongly? Yeah, this is negative. Then, then now it will be plus. But actually it doesn't matter because you know that it is actually 0, isn't it? Plus 1 over x cubed. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Actually, I made another mistake. It should be a negative here. Remember, I told you all your x are now negative. So this has to be negative. All the signs are actually wrong now. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. So it is 1 minus 4 over negative, negative, negative. So it's negative. x squared. Then plus 1 over x cubed. Minus 1 over x cubed. Am I right? Yes. Then you just go ahead and set this equals to 0, this is 0, this is 0. Hence, the answer is 0. In this case, it's very, very safe uh, because it is all 0. You know that 0, even though you multiply by positive, it is still 0. You multiply by negative, it's still 0. But in some cases, I mean a lot of cases, if it is not 0 and you multiply with a positive number, you get a positive. You multiply with a negative number, you get a negative, isn't it? And um okay, this is convenient because it is zero. Okay, so you have to be very careful with the sign. Anyway, then let's move on to the next one. Oh, you have a trigonometry limits. Uh, this actually this, you don't be afraid by seeing trigonometry limits again. Um, for this one, we actually don't need the what's that special trigonometry limits. Actually, we can just directly use some logic to tell this okay so the part of the question want us to find the limit as x approach infinity cos x over 3x okay so here's your theory part comes in how does your graph of cosine look like it is cycle between 1 and negative 1 isn't it which means the the range of this cos x will just be negative 1 and 1 it will not go anything further. Then how about your 3x? When you plug in infinity, it will be positive infinity. Something very small divided by something very big, it is equals to 0. Finish. That's it. Okay? Then how about part B? The limit as x approach negative infinity of cos x over 3x. Like I said, if you are not sure, then you just go ahead and do this over 3 negative 3x okay negative 3x then the range of cos negative x is also negative 1 1 and now your denominator will becomes negative infinity 
So it is. Actually, it is still zero. It doesn't matter. Uh. If it is something else, then you have to get, be very careful with the sign. Alright? So this is zero. Moving on to the next one. Okay. So you have a radical. You have a square root here. This is when you have to be very careful. Okay. So actually, it's the exact same approach. You will divide both top and bottom by the highest power in denominator. And in this case, it happens to be x. So you just go ahead and multiply 1 over x, 1 over x. Okay, then the limit x approach infinity of this. Okay, okay, let me do the bottom part first. 1 plus 1 over x, very easy, isn't it? When you are dealing with square root, be very careful because you cannot directly just multiply it in. You need to make sure this fella here is also under a radical, is also under a third. But in order to make it the same, you need to square it, isn't it? So that this square and square root can cancel. And now you can multiply it in, which is the square root. Okay, let me just write like this. Square root of um, x. Okay, no, no, no. I think I'll write like this. 1 over x squared x squared plus 1, right? This is what you can do. And this will just be 1 plus 1 over x squared. Okay? And now, remember the square root. Alright? Now you put in your infinity. This will be 0. This will also be 0. So it is square root of 1 over 1, which is positive 1. Finish. Okay, next, we will take x approach negative infinity. Limit x approach negative infinity of this feather here. But before that, before that, one thing that you need to do is you go and take x to positive infinity and you change your sign of x. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Because some of the x you are raising to positive power some of them you are uh, sorry you are raising to even power some of them you are raising to odd power so you know that if it is raising to uh, an, an even power this actually doesn't matter isn't it this part here that actually doesn't matter because you are still get a positive x squared okay then you do the exact same approach divided by one over negative x okay then on top it is also 1 over negative x. 1 over, uh, sorry. 1 over negative x. Okay? So, it will be the limit as x approach infinity. You do the bottom part first. This will be 1 minus... Oh, you have to be... Mm, 1 minus, how come I have a 2 here? I wonder very weird. Uh. x plus 1, okay? So now it is minus 1 over x. Okay? Then, the square root. To multiply it in, you need to square root it and you square this. You know, you know what, just now I thought about, oh, I need to square root a negative number, something wrong. But actually it doesn't matter because this is just square root of 1 over x squared, isn't it? It's positive. So yeah, just go ahead and bring it in, bring it in. This will be 1 plus 1 over x squared. And now you put in your infinity. This is going to be 0 over this. This is also going to be 0. Square root of 1 over 1 minus something. Okay, again, again, you say that it is 0, but it is not really 0, you know. It is 1 divided by 0. 0.0000. It's actually 1 divided by a very big number, and you have a negative sign in front. So it is actually negative 0. 0.0000000001, which means it's actually negative at the bottom. So positive divided by negative and this should be a negative one. Okay. So be very careful with the positive and 
negative sign when you are dealing with limits at infinity. Alright, so let's move on to the next part of the subtopic, which is infinite limits. Okay, so again, when you are dealing with infinite limits, it's also a matter of positive or negative infinity. And actually, this is much more easier than just now because you can just one look at it, you know that oh, your numerator is positive. Your denominator, if you're, you are approaching 0 from the right, means it is 0 0.00001 times 3 is 0 0.00003, which is also positive. Hence, this should be a positive infinity. Now, of course, you can do the hash approach, which is actually, there is no point in doing hash in this case because you are approaching 0. Okay, so actually, yeah, if you want, you can do that. Remember, if it is from the right, it is C plus H. Okay, you can do, 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 you will get the same answer. Now, how about this? Now, this is positive divided by, you see what happened? If you are, you are approaching 0 from the left, it is negative 0 0.00001. So, your denominator will be negative 0 0.00003, which is a negative number. Positive over negative, it is negative infinity. And of course, you can do the hash approach. Okay, 1 over 3, C minus H. And you do, 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 you'll get the same answer. Okay, now we are proceed with the exercises. So we have to evaluate the following limits algebraically. Okay, so for this one, the first thing you have to do when you are dealing with infinite limits, you go and do your positive negative analysis. So you, as you can see, your numerator is positive, your denominator, if it is 2 from the left, means negative 1.99999. Negative 1.9999 minus 2 is a negative, sorry, again, you approach 2 from the left, means it is yeah, 1.9999 minus 2, so it's a negative 0 0.0001, so it is the negative number. Hence, you expect your number to be a negative infinity, isn't it? But, um, okay, let's see how the hash approach will do. So, if you are dealing with one-sided limits, okay, you know that you have to use the hash approach. And in this case, it is from the left, so it is C minus H, okay? Minus 2. Actually, you know what? Whenever you are dealing with infinite limits, right? Your uh, hash approach actually is not so important. You just need to use it to maybe check your sign or whatever. Because you see, there is no point, right? If you sign in 0, you will still get something undefined. But at least now I know that. At least now I know that it is negative, right? By looking at this. Because my hash is something approach 0 and it have a negative here, means it is a positive, the other negative. So at the end of the day, you are still doing your positive, negative, positive, negative analysis. Alright, then next, oh, we have a secret. Uh, but actually, in this case, you know what, you know what, actually is um... It's a little bit hard for us to do it algebraically because the hash approach is not going to work. Why? Okay, so if you do the hash approach of second from the right, it is C plus H, okay, negative pi over 2 plus H. You know, you know what? It is still it is still second of negative pi over 2. And you know that this answer here should be undefined if you plug in f uh, if you directly sub in this one right from the graph you if you remember the graph of second okay this is your pi over two this is your negative pi over two it is something like this Ooh, oh, sorry. something like this okay something like this this is your second graph so you know that if it is from the right, it is supposed to be positive infinity. So actually, you have no choice but to do it graphically and you tell you say it is positive infinity. Or you can do it analytically. 
also can. You try to press your calculator, secant of negative pi over 2 from the right means what? You go and plus 0 0.000001. Then you should be able to get a positive number. Alright? Let me try it. <laughs> Let me try it. So secant is 1 over cos then negative pi over 2. That's 0 0.000001. Yeah, you get a very big positive number. Okay. So that's it, it for question number two. Question number three. Okay. Oh, okay. So now we have uh, x approach infinity. And I will expect this answer to be infinity as well. Because I can see something. And this is why I put this question here. Because there are, I have something to talk about. The rational function. The ra limits involving... Ration, <coughs> rational polynomial function. There is some shortcut to it. And I will show you that later. So like what we did just now, we know that we need to divide by the highest power in the denominator. And the highest power in the denominator happens to be negative 2. So 1 over x to the negative 2 is equals to x squared. Just go ahead and multiply top and bottom by x squared. Oops, sorry. X squared. Okay, then now you have what? X approach infinity. Just play around play around with your exponent rule, your in indices, right? 1 minus 1 over x. Okay, then if you put in your infinity, this is going to be 0. This is going to be 0. But you still have a problem, isn't it? Because you have an x here. You still have an x here. Which, if you put it infinity, is going actually the answer is going to be infinity, yeah. Okay, so this is why I want you to make a note of it. Whenever you have a limit when x approach infinity of a rational function f x over g x, you just have to pay attention to the degree of f x and degree of g x. Okay. So, there are three possible ways. Okay, let me just write like this. If your degree, okay, the degree of fx, which is the one on top, is smaller than the degree of gx, then you know that you are going to get zero. And I think we encountered it somewhere earlier on, right? Which is... This one. See? The degree on top is 0. The degree at the bottom is 3. So 0 is smaller than 3. Hence, the limit will be 0. Why? Because you know that you need to divide by the highest power in the denominator. By doing so, Whatever you have on top, you know that it is going to be zero. Right? Then at the bottom, yeah, maybe you have something something else. And you will not get zero. Why? Because you definitely have a one here. You are dividing by the the highest power. You definitely have a one at the bottom, which means you will not get zero over zero, but you will definitely get zero on top. Okay, so even even if you have an x squared or an x. If you are um, dividing by x cubed, you know that it's going to be 1 over x. Okay, let me use blue color. You know that it's going to be 1 over x plus 1 over x squared, which is also 0 when you put in the infinity. Okay, so this is where the shortcut comes about. If the degree on top is smaller than the degree at the bottom, when you divide both by the highest power in the denominator, you are going to get a 0. Finish. Next. It will be infinity, a positive or negative infinity. This one you still have to determine it yourself. You still have to figure it out by doing the positive negative analysis. If the degree of your numerator is greater than the degree of denominator, which is exactly what happened here. See, the degree of numerator is negative 1, right? Degree of numerator is negative 2, which is 
negative 1 is greater than negative 2. Hence, when you divide both top and bottom by the highest power of the denominator, you will still have something left on top. You definitely will still have some x or x squared or x cubed on top. You can't just make everything into zero. When, it, when you have a x or x squared or x cubed on top, when you put in the infinity, you know that it's going to be infinity, just whether it is positive or negative. All right? Then lastly, if the degree, okay, I'm running out of space here. Huh? If the degree of fx is equal to the degree of gx, then it's going to be some constant. And this constant is depending on, okay, this constant is the constant that attach to the highest power. Means if you have a limit, it's actually very easy, very simple to visualize. If it is x square, 2x square over 3x square. You know that if your degree on top and bottom is going to be cancelled, it is just going to be 2 over 3, which is actually a constant attached to the highest power, isn't it? So you know that if, it, if you have something else, okay, let me just extend this one a little bit plus x or yeah plus 2 plus 2x plus 1 yeah whenever you divide by the highest power 1 over x square 1 over x square this will become 0 isn't it okay this will this fellow here will become 0 this fellow here will become 0 0 0 and this is actually just going to be the 3 together with the 2 on top it is going to be 2 over 3 this is why when the degree on top and the degree at the bottom are the same, it is going to just be a constant. Okay? So yeah, it's a little bit messy here, but just remember the shortcut. Whenever you have the limit as x approach infinity of a rational function, it will be zero if the degree on top is smaller than that of the, the bottom. It will be positive or negative infinity if your degree on top is greater than the degree at the bottom. It will be some constant attached to the highest power of x if your degree on top is equal to the degree at the bottom. Right? So that is all I want to talk about for infinite limits and limits involving infinity. So in the next lesson, we will talk about the commonly occurring limits which is actually your transcendental function your trigonometry inverse trigonometry exponential logarithmic hyper hyperbolic and inverse hyperbolic and after you have that formula sheet it will be very easy when you are dealing with the limits with those transcendental functions all right so that's all for today see you guys in the next class